Hello everyone and welcome to another lecture. So in the past lecture we saw how we can try to develop a formal procedure to solve a couple differential equation or a system of differential equations and today we are going to work that out. And if you recall our couple differential equation or the system of differential equation had the general form like this. This f was the non homogeneous term and we will only consider the homogeneous equations that means f of t or this f will be 0 so our equation will now be something like x prime a x right and now we want to solve it. So, if you recall, these were column vectors. Obviously, I'm not using the bracket notation for convenience because since you are dealing with differential equation, if I use the bracket notation, you might get a bit confused. So, that's why I'm not using it. So, these are our column vectors. This was the matrix. And this matrix contained this P1, P2, da, 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 Pn q1, q2, dot, 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 qn. However, we are going to consider constant coefficients. Only. For simplicity. Because there might be cases where if the functions, these p's, q and q's, they are, if they are very complicated, it might not be possible to solve the differential differential equation analytically so that's why we are considering only constant coefficients so now since we are considering homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients what we can do is that we can make an analogy with the differential equation that we solved before and we can seek we can seek solutions in the form of capital X is equals to V e to the power RT where this V is a non-zero constant column vector now if you use the definition of X that is the type of solution you are seeking and the type of equation or system of equation you are trying to solve if you just combine these two that is let me just use another color combine this one and this one you will get the following that is this is the equation that you are trying to solve and you are seeking solutions as v x equals to v to the power rt and from here we will get the interpretation of r so x prime will be just since v is a constant column vector and r is just a number and t is the independent variable and this prime means you are differentiating let's say your x is something like this x1 x2 ta -ta 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 -ta. and when you take a prime of this this means you are differentiating element wise just like you did in the function of matrix when we did linear algebra so since this guy is a constant it will just stay there nothing will happen to it and only e to the power rt will get differentiated and it will speed up an r so this will just be r b e to the power rt right so let's write that as x prime r b e to the power rt equals to a x but x is what v e to the power rt right and this e to the power rt is not zero and what we can do is that you can take this guy onto this side and have a v minus smaller that is a scalar or a number whatever you want to call it and capital V and this is equals to zero right so this means and also e to the power rt is not equals to zero that's the condition 
And now from here, you can see that AV is equals to RV. Again, this A is a matrix. This is a column vector. This is a number. This is a column vector. And this is precisely the eigenvalue equation. And these V's are the eigenvectors of operator A. So V, they are eigenvector of A and R denotes the eigenvalues. So ultimately solving a system of linear differential equation with constant coefficients boils down to solving an eigenvalue equation and using these eigenvectors we can construct our solution. So let me just move forward with an example so that things are very clear to you. We'll see two examples and the first example will be where we can see some real and distinct eigenvalues and the equation we are considering is that x1 prime is equals to 3x1 plus 4x2 and x2 prime will be 3x1 plus 2x2 and we have our initial values this is the initial value problem so we are also having some initial values over here because if you don't use an initial value you will get an arbitrary constant if you get a initial value then you can find the values of this arbitrary constants so that's why i consider this thing so that i can show you the general solution and the and the solution where the arbitrary constants are determined so this is our system this one on the left hand side and this can be written as x1 prime x2 prime that is in a matrix manner like this 3 4 3 2 and you have x1 and x2 and you can check and match that this actually works so now denote this as capital x this as a and this is capital x sorry this one is capital x prime so again you have this form capital a capital x prime is equals to a capital x but we saw that we were seeking solutions in terms of the eigenvectors of the operator and the eigenvalues. That is the eigenvalue goes in the exponential and the eigenvector sits there. So the first thing we are going to do is that we are going to find the eigenvalues of A. So eigenvalues of A. So if you recall that if you have eigenvalues as R, this will be just the characteristic equation will come from this where i is a uh, since this is a 2 cross 2 matrix this is a uh, 2 cross 2 identity matrix so i'm just gonna write down directly that it has 3 4 3 2 so from the diagonal elements i have to subtract this r right okay and we have to make this determinant zero so now we get 3 minus r 2 minus r minus 12 equals to 0 and this will give us an equation if you just simplify it and multiply it this will give us r square minus 5r minus 6 equals to 0 this means r minus 3 oh no sorry not minus 3 it should be rather minus 6r plus r minus 6 equals to 0 this means r minus 6 and r plus 1 equals to 0. So the two eigenvalues are r equals to 6 and r equals to minus 1. So we have found our eigenvalues and now we want to find the eigenvectors. So let's try to find the eigenvectors now. So if you recall how to find the eigenvectors is that let's say I want to find for r equals to 6. So what I'm going to do is that we had a 3 over here so it will be 3 minus 6 it will be 4 it will be 2 uh, sorry this will be 3 and 2 minus 6 like this and there will be this x1 and x2 right 0 0 so this gives us minus 3 4 
3 minus 4 and x1 x2 equals to 0 0 and finally you will have minus 3 x1 plus 4 x2 equals to 0 and 3 x1 minus 4 x2 equals to 0 so these two are basically the same equation right and if you just uh, express x2 in terms of x1 one of them will be uh, will be the ratio of other so the best idea is to just use one of these equations let's say i'm going to use the second one this tells me that 3x1 is equals to 4x2 and i can say that x2 is just 3 by 4x1 right so the eigenvector let's denote it as v1 which corresponds to r equals to 6 will be just 3 by 4 x1 and this will be x1 and now i can take any value of x1 and i can even normalize it but i won't bother with the normalizing it really doesn't matter so let's take x1 equals to 1 you can take any value you want inside it because this is like a free parameter you have two equations and sorry you have two equation uh, you have two variables and one independent equation so this x1 is independent parameter so you have one over here and 3 by 4 over here now you can make things look nicer by multiplying it with 4 so that will give you 4 3 now you might say uh, why am i doing this it's allowed because it's just rescaling the vector and it really doesn't affect it, anything it just scales the vector it doesn't change its orientation so one of the eigenvector let's call this v1 as as before this will be just 4 and 3 and the other eigenvector that uh, comes from the value minus 1 the eigenvalue minus 1 that will be just minus 1 and 1 so now how do you write the solution so the full solution is written as this x where you have c1 v1 e to the power r1 t c2 v2 e to the power r2 t that means a linear combination of the solutions for the value for the variable x1 of t and the variable x2 of t that's how you write the full solution and obviously these are column vectors this x1 and x2 so if i just write down the full solution this will just be uh how do you say this yeah you just have to write down the numbers so let's say r1 equals to 6 so that will be 4 3 e to the power 60 plus c2 minus 1 1 e to the power minus t that's it and you can use the values over here this x1 0 and x2 0 that is this these guys to determine the coefficients that appear over here so this capital x if you recall that it had x1 and x2 like this right and now what you can do you can just put um, or you can even write it like this let's say 4 c1 e to the power 60 plus that means i'm writing in a compact matrix form i mean a column vector form so there will be a plus and there is a minus over here so that's minus c2 e to the power minus t and x2 oh no sorry not x2 and it will be 3 e to the power 60 and there is a c1 over here multiplied with so and here you will have a c2 e to the power minus t like this so this is your x1 this is your x2 so you can write x1 of t as 4 c1 e to the power 60 minus c2 e to the power minus t and you can write x2 t as 3 c1 e to the power 6 t plus c2 e to the power minus t and you have some initial values that is let's say x2 of 0 equals to 5 that we saw so 
what you need to do you need to put t equals to 0 over here and put x2 equals to 5 on the left hand side so 5 will equal to 3c1 plus c2 similarly x1 of 0 was simply 2 and x1 of t is over here that is this line again you put t equals to 0 over here and 2 on the left hand side so this will mean 2 equals to 4c1 4c1 minus c2 now you can easily solve for c1 and c2 because if I just add these two equations I will have 7c1 is equals to 7 that means c1 equals to just 1 and if c1 is equals to 1 then I'll have 2 then 4 into 1 that means 4 minus c2 so that will mean c2 is equals to just 2 and you are done this is how you can uh, solve this simple system of differential equations with constant coefficient and which are homogeneous now there might be cases where the eigenvalues are complex numbers right so that's why we're going to see another example today and this example will involve involve the complex conjugate eigenvalues and note that today we are discussing only the type of solutions that is only valid for the non-degenerate case that is the eigenvalues are not repeating themselves and we will see how we can deal with repeated eigenvalues that means whenever there is degeneracy we will see how we can deal that in the next video so in this example i'm going to give you a spoiler that the eigenvalues will now be uh, now in will come in terms of the complex conjugated terms that means complex eigenvalues so without further ado let's just write down the differential equations as minus x1 plus x3 and x2 prime as minus 2x1 plus x2 and i'm not gonna consider any uh, initial condition right now because i just want to because that's quite easy you just have to put the values of t and you have to find out the arbitrary constants so again if you just write them up like this obviously it's not necessary to write every time like this i'm just showing you for your convenience so this is minus one this is one minus two one right so our eigenvalue equation that means determinant of minus one minus r one minus two one minus r this will be zero that is the uh, thing that will give us the characteristic equation and if we do that this will just be minus 1 minus r times 1 minus r minus there's a minus 2 and this will cancel each other out so that's how it will be i can take another minus out this will just be minus 2 and sorry uh, the 2 won't cancel the only the minus sign will cancel each other out so yeah and this is just 1 minus r square is equals to 2 so this means r square is equals to 1 minus 2 that means minus 1 so r equals to plus minus square root over minus 1 which just means plus minus i so we have two eigenvalues with let's say r1 is equals to plus i r2 equals to minus i so how do we proceed we proceed the same way as before the only difference is that since we have this exponential and we have some imaginary number now if we want to uh, write our solution only in terms of real variable we have to use the Euler and the identity that's that's why I just wanted to show this thing other than that it's similar to how we dealt with the real eigenvalues so now we want to call up our solution with the capital X and before that we also need to find the eigen vectors right so let me just show you the end result of the eigen vector thing that the eigen vectors because you already know how to find the eigen vector so the eigen vectors for let's say the eigen value 
is just one of them is one plus i and the other one will be one plus i as well so uh, now we see that these are there are these two eigenvalues and as before uh, we are going to find the eigenvectors but now uh, there is something else and that is that since we are only dealing with uh, real numbers we can only construct real solutions so that's a constraint however if you don't have the constraint then you can keep up this exponential numbers and all that and if you now solve for the eigenvector you can get a basis eigenvector as 1 and 1 plus i like this you can verify it easily so after that what you are going to do is that you are going to construct a uh, real solution by using Euler's formula that is the Euler identity this one over here and we are only going to keep the real part because uh, if you are restricted if you are not restricted you can keep the imaginary part as well but if you are restricted then you have to keep the real part only so our first solution will be let's call this as x1 it will be the real part of this obviously i'm ignoring the arbitrary constant right now and we'll have e to the power i t like this and if you expand this in this oil using this euler equation this will just become cosine t and cosine t minus sine t okay and the other part let's call it x2 this will be the imaginary part of 1 plus i e to the power i t like this so again this will be just it's like just taking this thing and just boiling them into real and imaginary parts so if you do that this will just be you have to obviously calculate it using this Euler identity but uh, that's pretty simple and I'm not showing it over here so this will be just cos t and sin t like this and you can now use these two construction to solve the general uh, to make the general solution x of t which is again a column vector and as c1 x of 1 that we constructed over here and there is this x2 c2 x2 like this and this is your general solution and this c1 and c2 can be um, evaluated if there are any initial data so that is the idea so whenever you have a system of I have only shown uh, showed to you that the two cross two systems but this is also this will also work for any n cross n system that is homogeneous and the coefficients are constants that is the equation that um, look like okay let me find the equation the equations that look like this instead of two you can have three four five six blah 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 and there will be some coefficient matrix and there will be another column vector so this is how you can uh, formally solve system of differential equations by the using the techniques of linear algebra so this will be it for today and i'll see you guys on the next lecture thank you